Hey, uh, Karen, this is Rachel Ortiz from The Fighter's Voice. I gotta ask you this, as soon as you went into the ring, the crowd seemed to shift, but as soon as you started landing those combinations, they were all yelling Crawford. How does that make you feel to know that you need to win the fight, you won the crowd over? Uh, I think going into the fight, they all knew what they was up against, and they respected me from the jump. They just couldn't acknowledge it because their boy, you know, was fighting me, so they had to ride with Jeff Horn. Thank you, sir. Terrence, right in front. Congratulations. That was a great performance. Do you, it seems like you're getting better every time out. Do you feel like you're hitting your prime now where you know, you've know you gone through all these levels and now you're at 147 where you're going to stay and kind of you know do your best work? Yeah, I feel like I'm getting better and better. Uh, I feel like I'm stronger. I'm more you know, energized. I feel like this is a great division for me. The, the thing that you know impressed me tonight was you know how you were using your feet in there and you know kind of creating angles for yourself to throw those punches and, and get out of there. Is that something you feel like is a level you've taken above? I know you've always had quickness and good feet, but it seems like tonight your footwork was really outstanding. Uh, <coughs> if you watch me fight, it's the same thing, you know. Uh, make my adjustments and uh, catch me coming in if that's what they want to do or. Go to them. You, know, the foot, you gotta bring your foot, foot feet with your hands. So it's something that we practice on. And I, my last question for you is, I just said I think you know you and, uh, and Earl Spencer are by far the two best guys out there. How do you think you would do against him uh, and you're gonna be at his fight next week? I do well with him. I, I believe I do well with any what's weight in the division and so forth. How was your wind out there? <laughs> oh, I was loving it. I had that oxygen, that H2O. Yeah. Terrence, there was a little bit of animosity between the camps this week. A little bit of a war of words during the week. Did that uh, add to your motivation to <clears throat> make the win any more satisfying time? Uh, of course, but I knew where the, they camp was coming from. You know, they were trying to get under my skin. I'm pretty sure they didn't believe it. Nothing that they were saying. They were just coming up with excuse at their excuse. Uh, what him and his coaches and my coaches had going on, they had nothing to do with me. I stayed focused. Terrence, at what point did you feel um, you could stop Jeff before the fight? At what point during the fight? About the second, third round. I knew that I was the stronger guy. I knew that his punches couldn't hurt me, and, you know, I hit him with, I think, a right hook that really hurt him, and I knew it was just a matter of time. Terrence, post fight, you said that your trainer, Bo Mack, wanted you to switch to southpaw, and you decided not to. Why Why did you know you had him, even in the orthodox? No, he wanted me to switch back to orthodox. Oh, from southpaw. <laughs> yeah. What, what made you not switch? Not the whole fight. Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he wanted me to switch back. But uh, I just chose not to because I told him I had him and uh, I was going to get him out of there. You didn't want to talk about the future before the fight, but now that this is over, next fight, maybe in October, do you have, uh, you know, is there someone that you want to could go up against? Well, right now we're going to go home. You know, we're going to enjoy this win. Uh, we've been out the ring for a long time, so we're just happy to be back in the ring. And we're going to uh, make up a plan and see where we go. But I assure you that we're looking for the biggest fights out there. Any more questions? You personally, to raise your persona to make yourself a more marketable athlete in terms of the general public as opposed to the boxing folk? I believe I just gotta keep doing what I'm doing. Like Marvin Hackett, right? He, I, 
Marvin never did anything really to endear himself to you guys, but he made more money than any of the middleweights around because he was Marvin Hagler and he stayed to the end being Marvin Hagler. So is Bud Crawford. He's going to be Bud Crawford forever. That boy Bud! First of all, congratulations on a great win, a great dominating win. Um, he was coming at you full force at first. And did, did you feel like, I'm going to ask you this, were you prepared for him to come at you like that? And how did you keep so calm under those conditions? Uh, of course we were prepared for that. Uh, I'm a common fighter. Uh, we knew who we was up against. Uh, we dealt with bigger, stronger, faster sparring partners in training camp. That was relentless and did back up. So that helped me prepare for tonight. Oh, it feels great. Uh, I'm a champion now. You know, I, I can call myself a champion. Coming into this fight, I was the challenger, and I too much didn't like that. I wanted the title again, and now that I got that, now I can rest and assure you that I'll be back stronger and better next time. Terrence, was there anything Jeff did that surprised you at all? Uh, not really. Uh, we knew everything he was going to do in there. We knew how he was going to come. Uh, there's only so much you can change in a person's style when he's so used to fighting one style and one style only. So we knew how the fight was going to go. We knew how he was going to come. going into the fight uh, that the only chance that uh, Jeff would have is, is to you know, maybe get lucky and, 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 and land one on you? Or, or did you change your opinion once that fight started? Did, did he show you more than you thought going into the fight? Not at all. Uh, he did everything we expected him to do. Uh, like I told everybody before, he came in there with the intentions of roughing me up and getting aggressive. But the thing he didn't understand was how strong I was. So I think they underestimated me a little bit on that aspect of the game. But once we got in there and he felt my strength, he too much, you know, just wanted to dart in with the straight right. Terrence Terrell Emerson from UNLV. The question that I have, you just kind of touched on it. Jeff said um, in the ring after the fight that you kind of shocked him um, in terms of power. How many uh, what sort of ways do you believe that you're going to shock in terms of your power? Uh, I think they all going to respect me now. You know, uh, I feel like I just displayed my talent and my power. And he's supposed to be a big welterweight in the division. And they see how I dealt with him. so. They're going to be a little cautious. You're now the WBO welterweight champion. Congratulations. At 140, you unified the division. It was the first time in forever that that had been done. Is that the goal here at 147? Facts. You know, uh, we won them all. We won them all. That's the goal. One, much, I have one more question for Terrence. Well, my, my second question real quick. Um, 147, did... Obviously, you didn't have to like melt yourself down and make weight, but did you do anything to kind of gain any strength, or was it just more about not making the weight? No, the strength is always there. You know, uh, credit my strength and conditioning coach, Jamie Bell, <coughs> get me in the best of shape of my abilities. Uh, I got stronger in there, being that I didn't have to cut as much weight, and I think it showed today. Come here, Terrence. Congratulations on the win. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is already been addressed, I just got in here from finishing up at ringside. But you, you came out left handed and you switched all the time, but you started off right off the bat left handed. I want to know what was right handed. I'm not sorry, right handed. And then you switched left handed in the eighth round. Uh, 
What was the reason for the switch? <laughs> Just cause. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure if it was something that Brian said to you or that you just felt like you could you would show him everything from one stance and go to the other, confuse him a little bit. I gotta keep my right hand stands away from people. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say that. I gotta keep that fast. I wanna ask uh, Bob also, Bob, uh, I'm not sure what your opening comments were. Can you just get my that? opening comments were that I, I was telling him. I had a little microphone, it was in his ear, switch left, switch right. <laughs> <laughs> Trump, that was yeah, no. I just was, can you just give your assessment of what you've seen? You watched him so many years. You watched him through the two weight class and now at welterweight. Just give your impression of what you see in Crawford tonight in the future. He's form. a terrific fighter. I told everybody I compare him, and it's the highest praise that I could give a fighter of welterweight, uh, mid-level, you know, weight divisions. That he it reminds me of Sugar Ray Leonard, and that to me is a great, great compliment because I always thought that Leonard was the best. And this guy is equal, if not better, than Ray was. What about the future for him? Future is unlimited. Unlimited. We're going to, one thing with this ESPN platform, we have the dates, and we're going to uh, have uh, Bud fight as many times as he and Bomack uh, want, uh, you know, if he wants to fight three times a year, if he wants to fight four times a year, we got the dates for it. So it's up to him as to how busy he wants to be.